Hi guys, Cat Cool here again um, with another uh, repair type video. Um, recently on eBay, I bought a Sega Dreamcast. Uh, no cables or anything with any of these, by the way, and three uh, Mega Drive 2s. Um, these cost me a grand total of £27. Uh, there was all on spares of repairs. Um, so, I mean, I've got to wait for cables for these, so we'll do these in another video, so I'll just shift these out of the way. I've already got cables for a Sega Dreamcast anyway. Um so yeah, uh, basically I got this and I thought it probably doesn't read discs as you know that is generally the most most common problem with uh, Sega Dreamcast but when I plugged it in it does read discs the the drive is absolutely uh, spot on with it works absolutely fine um so as I as I looked uh, as I first turned it on and it was okay and then after sort of a couple of minutes, it, uh, the, the, it kept getting lines across the screen and uh, little bits like that. So uh, obviously uh, we're going to have to have a look at it. But what I'll do first, guys, is uh, I'll get it all plugged into the TV and I'll show you exactly uh, what the fault is. Right, guys, as you can see here, uh, this is... Oh, you can see me in the... Uh, and the thing doesn't look too bad at that point, um, but um, this bit don't look too bad actually. But if you if you kind of if we go past this bit, uh, let me just plug a controller in. I know you're not supposed to do that, but. Just turn that out there. There we go. Um, yeah, that's fine. Don't know if this controller is absolutely uh, perfect, to be honest. To be honest, I don't think it is. But. Um, See, it looks reasonable at that point. Uh, bearing in mind, I have only got it plugged in on a on a basic Dreamcast uh, cable, not a not an amazing one. But I tell you what will be better for showing you uh, exactly what it does. Just uh, take that game out, um, and if you look here, as you can see. You can see all the graphics are messed up, uh, and uh, it just looks really poor. Now I've tested the cable, the, uh, the the cable that I've got it plugged into the TV on, on a uh, on another Dreamcast. There's nothing wrong with the cable; absolutely crystal clear on the other Dreamcast. So there's not a problem in that respect. Um, so I would say. Um, to me, first thought, first thing I think I'm going to check is the power supply area. Because I, I have a feeling that some of them capacitors in the power supply, there's quite a few capacitors in the power supply of the Dreamcast. And I have a feeling that some of those, uh, or what one or two of those, <clears throat> may be a bit leaky. And, and they are designed to smooth the... Um, the power supply, which is the same in a lot of a uh, lot of devices around the home, actually, uh, to stop this sort of thing from happening. So that's going to be my first port of call. I've got another Dreamcast, so I can uh, pinch the power supply out of that one, which is absolutely fine, and chuck it in this one and see what happens. If if we get a good result, then obviously the power supply is at fault. But if not, then we'll delve a bit further. So uh, let's go back to the Dreamcast, guys, and. Uh, and get that power supply out. Right guys, as you can see, we're back with the Dreamcast. Right, quite simple to take to pieces, to be honest. Um, I don't know if you can see, there's one screw hole there, one there, one there, and there's one underneath uh, the modem here. So, 
I don't know if that's... If we just slide this out somehow, there we go. It just, uh, you push down on, on that bit and then it just pulls off. Right, I've already undone the screws on this, but there's one there as well. So undo those four screws, turn the Dreamcast back over, and the lid just pops straight off. Uh, just like that. Um, in fact, I think we'll just, I'll just stick that down there, out the way. Um, I think actually I'm going to need to raise the camera a little bit and aim it down so you can actually see what I'm doing. Uh, let's just do that. Sorry about this, guys. And oh, this one. That's better. Oh, that's a lot better. Right. So we've got the top off the Dreamcast. Power supply area is just down this side here. As you can see, all this, this is the power supply. So the first thing we're going to do is unplug the power switch. Uh, you just... Um, press this little clip in here and then it just pulls straight off just like that um, right and then we've got one two we've got a third screw in this no I don't think so just those two screws there and uh, the power supply bulb will lift out so grab a screwdriver which I should have got already but never mind um, there we go right Screw first one. Just put that to one side and unscrew the second one. I was I was sure there was three in here. Uh, oh, sorry, I'm knocking the camera there, guys. I thought there was three, but obviously not. Right. Anyway, <coughs> as you can see, this end here, these pins are, are through here. And that's connecting it to the main board that's uh, housed right at the bottom of the Dreamcast. Um, so basically, there's a little plastic clip here. And then you need to pull it from this end first. Um, because obviously it's secured quite tightly there. So let's just uh, do that. Right, that's those lifted off. I don't know if you can really see what I'm doing here. Uh, maybe not, um, but yeah, that's it. Power supply board is out. That easy. Um, very simple indeed. Right, so we'll grab our other Dreamcast, which I think that's got the uh, donor board in. Um, I'll just take this board out because you've just seen me do that. Well, I'll tell you what. Now we'll uh, just um, stick this one here. Um, I'm not sure age-wise if they're exactly the same, but the the power board is is nearly um, nearly I well it is identical. They're both exactly the same, so it's no problem with uh, doing this. So I just chuck the screwdriver down there, and this one's got a broken laser, which I've been working on as well. And, uh, Undo that there, and do the same thing again. Oh. Can be a bit tight sometimes. But, right, that's that one out of there. Right, so if we come back to this, fitting it back in is quite simple. You just basically just, uh, you know, position it up in the right position and then just press down and that's it. That's the board, uh, board in. Right, I'm not going to screw it down um, because obviously this is just for, uh, for testing. Um, you know, so we'll, uh, what we'll do is get it all plugged back in and we'll go back to the TV and, uh, and see how we are. See if um, see if it's made any difference. Um, a lot of fault finding is this sort of thing, you know, trying to eliminate where the problem is. It could be a problem with the main board. I don't actually know, but uh, it's worth trying the power supply first because it's nice and quick and and easy to give it a test if you've got a um, you know a, a 
another one to take parts from. Um, so anyway, we'll um, we'll get it in front, get the camera in front of the TV, and uh, see what we've come up with. Right, guys, as you can see, we're back at the TV. So let's see, let's power it up and see if it's made any difference whatsoever. No, it hasn't. So it's not a power supply problem. It is it is something a little bit deeper. So, but at least we've tested that fact. Um, <clears throat> the other thing it could be is the power switch. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to get this other Dreamcast laid next to it. I'm going to plug that power switch into this board and uh, and see what we come up with then. Because it could be something as simple as a problem with the power switch. And there is a capacitor on the power switch. So I would think that might be smoothing it a little bit there. So uh, yeah, well, uh, I'll, I'll get that changed over. I'll not change it over. I'll just plug it in from the other Dreamcast and try and fire it up and see what happens then. So I'll, uh, I'll just, basically, I'm just going to swap the plug round, you know, from one to the other. So, uh, yeah, we'll leave it set up in front of the TV and we'll see what we come up with then. Right, guys, got the other one plugged in, so I'll be switching it on from the other Dreamcast, obviously, because that's where the switch is, and we'll see what we get then. It's just powering up. Now, and we've still got the same problem, so it's nothing power-related whatsoever. Um, so, we'll have to uh, get the camera in front of the Dreamcast again, and we're going to have to do some serious stripping down of the machine <coughs> to get to get to underneath. Um, I can't see it being anything to do with the controller board really, but it's always possible. So I think, I think actually next we'll try swapping that out and see if that makes any difference um, and go from there. Okay guys, we'll, uh, I'll get the camera set up in front of the Dreamcast again and we'll get that controller um, controller board swapped out. Right guys, um, right, to get the, uh, as I said, we're going to uh, try and change out the controller board. Uh, this one is a different coloured PCB, but it's exactly the same board anyway, there's no problem there. Um, right, so uh, to get this out, we first need to take out the power board because it's covering uh, part of the controller board there. So... Uh, you know, I haven't put the screws back in this for this reason because I thought we might have to be uh, stripping more stuff down so we'll just take that back out again put that to one side uh, there's four screws in the controller board one here one here, one here and one down in this corner as well so we take those four out Well, we will if I can uh, if I can actually unscrew them. <laughs> oh, drop that. Never mind. Do all these. Right, and that makes the board loose. And the next thing we're going to do, there's a ribbon cable going from the main board down here into here. So uh, if we just unplug that, you just pull that out. It should just pull out no problem. There we go. There's no clip on it or anything like that. Um, and then the other thing to unplug is the, uh, is the fan. So... Uh, which can sometimes be quite tight and awkward to get out but if you just keep hold of the socket on the board uh, while you try and pull the plug out it'll be fine it's what I do love about this console is it's it's all uh, it's quite easily you know to work on because it's it's quite basic the way it's put together oh. 
<coughs> so if we just pull that out there and then the uh, the board should just lift out if you just pull the front plastic um, away from the console and then this board should just lift out of there there we go right so if we uh, put the other board in <coughs> and just drop it into place it doesn't have to be uh, screwed back down at this point because uh, we're only testing so it's not it's not overly important Ah, I don't know if that's me that pulled that out of there slightly, the connection between the main board, it probably was to be fair guys. Um, so yeah, if you just connect all these connectors back up, the fan and the uh, ribbon cable between the main board and the Dreamcast, drop the power supply back in. Oh, catching a capacitor. Um, and there we go. That's it all back together. So we'll get it on the TV and uh, <clears throat> see if we've got any joy. I, I, I can't see this making a great deal of difference, but it's always good to check things, um, you know, before, uh, before you go any further. Um, Yeah, it's always good to check things. So uh, let's get it all plugged back in and uh, we'll get the camera in front of the TV and see uh, see if we've got any joy. Right, we're in front of the telly guys. Let's uh, power up and see what we get. No, no difference. It's still doing it. As you can see. Um, so... <clears throat> nothing to do with that so the next stage is is basically to strip the Dreamcast down we'll just power that off um, to just strip it down and get to that main board underneath and see what we can see and um, there will be something on there that's uh, that's causing this issue it could even be uh, uh, actually thinking about it it could be the uh, um, the actual uh, output port is dirty even the contacts won't clean up or, or whatever so uh, but we'll we'll worry about that when we get to it it's always best to you know test each bit um, the only other bit I could test actually would be the fan uh, which actually I will give that a quick try actually because it's best to um, explore all you know all the possibilities so uh, what I'll do is I'll get the fan out of the other drink cast that I've got um, and I'll plug that in and uh, and see what happens. Uh, so we'll pick it back up once I've uh, plugged that fan in. Right guys, I uh, I decided that wasn't a good idea because it's difficult to get the uh, get the fan out of one of these. Um, uh, you know, as it sits without stripping it all the way down. So uh, all I've done is I've just unplugged the fan for a moment. Uh, just so we can uh, we can see if it's uh, solving the problem. So let's uh... ah now we don't get anything. That's interesting. It's very interesting. Now we get nothing at all from it. Let me just try plugging that fan back in and uh, let's see what happens then. I'm not going to start and stop the camera because it might take me a second to plug the fan back in. But I highly doubt this is the problem to be honest with you. Um, I can't see the fan causing that much of an issue to be honest. So that's the fan plug back in. 
if we still don't get anything out of it we've uh, oh keep dropping that power lead uh, we've got a serious problem then I might have broken it no it does it sparks straight back up so you can't fire it up without it having the fan I wonder I'm going to have to try a bit harder and try and get the fan out of the machine, I think. So uh, I will get it out, guys, and um, and we will give it a proper test. Okay. Right, and guys, finally, <laughs> I've managed to uh, get it out of there. It's uh, it's one one of the Dreamcasts is just a plastic fan that's in there. I don't know if that's been replaced at some point, but. Um, the other one is actually screwed to the heatsink, so either they're different versions or it's been replaced at some point in its life. Anyway, I've managed to get it plugged in now, so let's see uh, what we get now. And we've still got the same effect, so there's definitely a problem somewhere in the main board. So uh, what we'll do now, we'll, um, we'll just switch that off. Uh, and what we'll do is we'll get it on the bench and we'll get this Dreamcast stripped down to the main board at the bottom. Um, which won't take long, uh, won't take long at all, because it's, like I say, they're, they're quite simple devices to take to bits and put together. So uh, anyway, we'll get it back, uh, get the camera set up back at the bench and, uh, and go through stripping it down. Right guys, as you can see I've already took out the controller port again, um, so next thing, uh, that's one thing you've always got to remember, unplug the mains before you start playing about with anything. <clears throat> um, right, so we'll pull the uh, power board back out, uh, as we've already tested that, so we can eliminate that. <clears throat> can't see the laser causing uh, an issue like that um, definitely it won't be the laser I can guarantee you that so first thing we're gonna do is take out this little plastic bit here which just lifts out get that out of the way um, next thing um, if we just unscrew the laser unit there's three screws <clears throat> one here, one here, and there's one on the other side. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, you can. Just down there, and then it just lifts straight out because it's on a, it's on a connector as well to the main board, which is this be a feature of the Dreamcast? To be honest, like I say, I don't know massive amounts about these uh, machines, but. Um, you know, I remember I I was more of a PlayStation person, so maybe I I um, you know I was one of the people that uh, didn't bother one of these machines when they first came out. But uh, yeah, if you just watch, you'll see that it just lifts straight out. It's the connectors on 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 uh, this side of the unit, so that's where it's at its tightest. Ah, yeah, that's where it's its tightest. Um, and it will it will be slightly resistant. There we go, and it lifts out. Not a problem. <clears throat> yeah, it doesn't look too bad. Looks quite decent, actually. Um, right, so we'll just shift that out of the way. Um, and we're just left, basically, uh, with the heatsink covering the main board, which, as you can see, there's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight screws, and then the heatsink will lift out. Um, yeah, so that's basically it. <clears throat> then we'll uh, then we'll be at the main board.
and we can get a good look at it and see if there's any... What we're really looking for, what I'm looking for, is um, is obvious signs of damage. Uh, capacitors with top split. I don't know if there's any of the uh, the normal cylinder type uh, underneath here. Um, I don't think there will be, to be honest. But we may, we may find something that's, uh, you know, that's uh, causing the issue we have. Um, it could be a dry solder joint. It could be, um, but we'll. The first thing we'll have a look for is any obvious signs of damage. Um, let me just get this AV cable out of the way, because uh, probably going to struggle to lift it off with that. In. Um, <clears throat> yeah, just any obvious signs of damage uh, to the board. Uh, really, first off. Which, you know, anybody can look for that sort of thing. Any burn marks, any components that look damaged or anything like that. Um, right, that should, uh, hopefully, it should lift straight off. I say should. I'm just making sure I have got all the screws out. Um, got them all undone, but... Uh, just takes a little bit, of, little bit of coaxing, I think. And there we go. If you just push this uh, this cable through the gap that it comes through, and then we should be uh, should be all okay. Right. That's a screw I dropped inside there. It wasn't inside there initially. Um, right. Let's just shift that out of the way. And we're just looking for any obvious signs of uh whoo, nearly knocked my camera over, nearly dropped my screwdriver and everything. Just looking for any obvious signs. Um all the capacitors under here are, are not the normal kind and they all look absolutely fine, you know. There's no signs of uh physical damage that I can see anywhere <coughs> on that board to be honest. Uh, <clears throat> now, so what we're going to do is we're going to lift it out and have a look on the underside, see if we can see anything under there uh, that may be causing the problem. Just actually, I'm just looking inside where the uh, where the connector goes. It's quite filthy inside there. Looks like it could do with a bit of a clean. There's a couple of the contacts that got some sort of white residue on them. Like they've been painted on or something daft like that. But there's no... I can't see any signs of, uh, of physical damage whatsoever. Um, so what I'm going to do first, I'm going to get a cotton bud. And I'm just going to clean out these connectors. And... Then, I'm going to um, give it another try. Uh, just sit it back in and, and just just basically just put the power supply on. Just so we can connect it up and, uh, and see if we've still got the problem uh, evident. And if we have, then we'll uh, look a bit further and maybe have a look around for some dry joints or something. Which it could also be. Because uh, you've got to remember this machine is what? you know, uh, 15 years old, um, so, you know, obviously it's not brand new, so, yeah, anyway, uh, I'll get my cotton buds and uh, we'll give that socket a clean and then give it another try. Right guys, I tried cleaning the pins and there was no dirt on them, so I didn't bother recording that bit, I didn't see the point. Uh, right, Basically, we've got the Dreamcast out of its case, upside down, power supply is connected. Uh, yeah, power supply is pretty much connected. I've got a little bit of, um, I've got the uh, little plastic piece that was out of the Dreamcast in between the two boards because obviously we don't want those short together. 
this is just so I can tap around the bottom of the board and uh, and see if we get any joy. Um, what I'll do is I'll keep the camera on the actual board, um, and if I do find an area, I'll uh, I'll flip the camera around so you can see. Um, that's not a problem. It just might not be, uh, you know, the ideal view. Um, so what I've done is I've unplugged it from the mains well. I plugged it all in. Uh, so we'll just do that. And I've got it wired up to the uh, on-off switch still. So as you can see, it's uh, it's all going. That's interesting. Ah, there we go. Ah, yeah, of course it. It will actually boot up because I haven't got the um, I ain't got the CD drive uh, the GD ROM uh, connected, but that's fine. That's not a problem. Um, we can see a few areas I can on this board where the soldering looks a bit. It looks a little bit suspect, but we'll just uh, if you can see what I'm uh, basically doing, just tapping very lightly around the board and watching the TV, see if I can see any kind of fluctuation whatsoever. And to be honest, guys, I can't see anything. Um, and I've done a little bit of research, and I, you know, I can't find anything on this problem whatsoever that anybody's come across it before. Uh, it's very odd, very odd indeed. Um, but yeah, I, I can't see any problem at all. Uh, like I said, I've tried everything I can think of. Um, yeah, I can't really think of anything else, guys. That uh, you know, without without delving seriously into where it's output in the video. Uh, maybe, maybe get me multimeter on the board and uh, have a look at the few a few of the resistors I think will be next uh, next port call uh, that's obviously done nothing you know it's, st it's still exactly the same as it was guys so uh, but get the multimeter out and I'll uh, I'll get a good look at the board where the uh, where the video output is and check a few of the components around that area so I'll get all this put back to where uh, you know all separated again and uh, and then we'll just have the dreamcast board and we'll have a check of a few resistors capacitors and such like around the uh, around the video output area right and guys i realize the camera may be a little bit blurry at this point but um this is this is the pins along here that goes to the um the av out now basically, uh, this third pin on the bottom row, which I'll just stick me pointer on there. Right, that goes to a couple of resistors um, along along the circuit. Now, when I chucked the multimeter, I, I, t I tested the resistors, they were fine. They're no problem there. Right, I've got my multimeter on continuity. Now, when you touch on the resistor which i'm i don't know if you can really see this um right touch on there and touch on that now that is not a good connection it sometimes you get it sometimes you don't but the the third pin here there's continuity with that to those but if you And it's the same again. And when you look at actually physically look at the pins, I don't know if I can uh, bring this up here and it it will focus or not. I don't think it will. Uh, let's try just zooming out a little bit. I don't know if you can really make that out now. It's still a bit blurry. Uh, my camera's not, you know not the best it's uh it's not exactly a expensive camera but anyway 
you just have to take my word for it, but this pin and this pin, the solder looks a lot duller and, uh, and whatever. So, I'm kind of thinking, hopefully, that this is the issue that we're having. Um, so what I'm going to do is, I'm going to get the iron heated up, and I'm going to solder those two pins up, and uh, and then we'll give it another test and see what we get. Um, not saying that will fix it, but it's a possibility. Um, so uh, anyway, I'll get the iron heated up, I'll solder those up, and I'll show you them when I, once I've done it. Right, guys, <clears throat> I tried to solder that particular pin up. The M1 was not a problem uh, that I pointed out. That was not an issue at all. But uh, when I went to um, solder up the, 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 the second pin that I mentioned, uh, it would not solder up whatsoever. So what I ended up doing, actually, it's come off again. Actually, I need to re-solder that. But anyway, I've, uh, I've put in a wire link... Uh, between the two points where there was no connection between this uh, SMD resistor and, and the point there and then all the continuity was absolutely spot on obviously I need to re-solder that a bit better but um, <clears throat> yeah it was all fine so hopefully we can get this back on then what we'll do is we'll get the uh, we'll get the Dreamcast back in its proper case and everything and uh, and give it a quick blast and see if we've made any uh, any progress. So uh, yeah, I'll solder that back on, guys. Get it back in its case uh, and all that sort of thing. I mean, this being stuck up's not a problem because this cable I can just fold it down and then solder it into place and then just tape it down so it doesn't move anywhere. Um, so that won't be an issue because these these components on the board stick up more than the wire will anyway, so it won't be an issue. <coughs> But uh, yeah, anyway, I'll get that soldered back up um, and um, and also I will get it back in its case and we'll give it another try and, uh, and see if we've uh, got anywhere. As you can now see guys, um, zoom, zoom out a little bit, I've got a game running, it's running absolutely fine. Um, like I say, the AV, you know, the uh, aerial cable's not the best because it's straight into the aerial socket of my TV, so the quality isn't uh, awesome, but I'll just, uh, hang on, let me just start this again. But as you can see, no problem on the, you know, round the edges or anything like that. I'm just going to have to get myself an AV cable. I'm not the best at this game. But as you can see, it's, uh, I mean, obviously, the Dreamcast at the minute is in bits. Got to mind the uh, chicane, but I'm more of a steering wheel gamer, so I'm not great on the controller. But as you can see, it's, uh, you know, there's... There's no screen tearing going on. Like I say, the picture's a bit fuzzy, but that's due to, you know, um, that's due to the cable. Oops. <laughs> As I said, I'm not great. But, uh, yeah, basically, that little wire link there seems to have uh, sorted out the problem. You know, like I say, it's not... It's not perfect on this cable anyway, but but it is, uh, you know, it's a lot better than it was. Um, I'm going to have to get myself an a, a proper AV cable and try and get myself an RGB one. It'll look really nice then. Um, yeah. So that's basically it, guys. We'll pause that there. Um, as you can see, it's, as you can see, it's all running. No, no tearing on the lettering or or anything anymore. So, uh, yeah, all sorted. Um, anyway, many thanks for watching, guys. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video, or maybe you didn't, but whatever. Um, if you could just, uh, you know, subscribe, like, and comment. Okay, guys. Catch you next time.